Tom Biz. Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome. Yeah, I am Tom Biz. You're Connor. I like your hat. You. And we're going to be going into... <laughs> Oh, what was that producer? Do you want to say that to the whole stream? I, w I wish I wish they could hear you. It'd be beautiful. But uh, yeah, we're going to be going into another day. We got some absolute bangers of matches today. We've got all of our top three teams coming up. And uh, are you going to go crazy today, Connor? I I might. I might go crazy if this streak continues. Thirteen and zero <laughs> is where this roster finds themselves. And as we get into the very last day of the regular season. They will be tested. The Vitality matchup that comes up next, Tom, is the one we've all been waiting for. And this can yeah. serve as maybe a test. And for some of you nut jobs out there, potentially an upset. I mean, XCOM are going to have their hands full. They haven't had necessarily a bad season. In fact, they haven't played many games. But we just know so much more about Crazy. We anticipate, you know, the success they've been able to show so often in recent times, most notably online. These guys just wreck face. Because they're not scared, Tom. They're not scared at all. Yeah, and already a strong start to them. Finding two openers on towards the A site. The rotation is in, but there's also a flank. Esperanto playing a bit more of a lug, but Reitz able to get two. A third even comes into his name and leaves it on to Letney to actually make the initial push. Now, Esperanto's flank does end up working out. Last man standing will be Mono. And although Reitz makes things a little bit interesting, it is still going to be the win coming in for Crazy. Yeah, nice attempt with the three kills, but uh, it, it's all on the, the, the chaos that Esperanto seems to thrive within. Gets inside of the elevator, crouch and crawls his way through. Closes the round out, and we're going to have Crazy coming in with the triple AK double MAC-10. Now, the MAC-10s, that's where we're going to see the utility. And you were just touting the utility of Crazy, or so they say they have it. What they always have, Tom, without a doubt, is headshots. And Esperanto lines up a couple bodies just to make this around all the easier but it comes with losses hopefully yes the third ak is recuperated the two mac 10s thrown to the wayside and well the utility wasn't even really needed because of the pace of the round so let's just get through it and move fast the first gun for xcom hits the board we've got four augs and the m4 decent utilities zero kit so let's see if uh, crazy slows down the pace here bleeds them out a little yeah this is a roster that have been pretty invincible since the rebrand They've lost one map. It was versus Heroic. In a best of three, they won. Other than that, they ha they haven't lost a map since they changed their name, excluding that one. So they have been incredible. Uh, Nexus become the in-game leader again, which has really opened up Esperanto. He went very, very quiet for a few months, even sort of talked about how he was demoralized, and then just seems to be back in full force once again, which is probably the scariest prospect within this roster is if all the stars are kicking they seem pretty damn good but for now it has been oscarist to kick things off with the aug a passive setup for this ct side just sitting back at range and uh, this could make things interesting for the t's they're definitely going to need some of the executions i've heard about from emmy For now, it's just the walk contact. Next to an auto with eyes open, but a mission. And Motto gets the best of it. This is going to push Reese into a position to make a play. Finally, some sort of a response. Letney is able to catch a headshot. Esperanto looks for one as well. And a smoke grenade on the site should start to create space, create chances at a play. Maybe they push through this, and Reitz, knowing of said fact, goes for the spray down through the smoke, does so much substantial damage and still he'll lose his head let me close cuts it into the one versus three from four refreshes the smoke and pops the flash now that desperation plant where innocent's probably just going to swoop in and shut it down even though he goes for the fake he can't make anything more of it so xcom early on the board immediately with the guns and moving forward with three is an excellent spot for them yeah, and actually just that little bit of damage that we saw come in over the last couple of rounds has meant that it's going to be a bit of a dicey buy for the T side. Definitely one that they can make work, but a single AK onto Nexa, a couple of Galils, and then just pistols for the remaining two. Arguably the two you'd probably want to have weaponry, but that's just the way Counter-Strike goes sometimes. And they're looking like they might try a faster play in towards the site. An aggressive position, but caught out. It will be Reeks to go down early. Retrieval of that weapon, definitely not going to be easy. But still a possibility. The problem is, 
Only two smokes. Popping them out here would be a little bit risky, but they are actually going to be able to, well, retrieve one of the Galils. Lentley doesn't actually chuck anything back, so <laughs> just, just <laughs> add a Galil will go in the corner, never mind. He hangs on, dude. That's a, that's a wild position from Reitz. It plays entirely onto the traffic cone. I mean, you see how exposed his body is now that he's dead, but he has the cover of the orange cone for only a moment. Hell of a way to give away a five versus three, and then a chance for the rotation. We get the bomb moving back, and you see Oscarish now wary of the ace. Question in my mind is how far forward have Crazy already gotten? Not far at all. Hunter's just behind sandbags. Could boost a player up if they want to make it silent. Want to make it slick. But doesn't seem likely. Smoke down. Should cover off the eyes of at least Innocent, but Oscarish may have position over. At least there's two CTs on this bomb. The rotation, it's not coming just yet, and there's a lurker on mid. Bomb near planted. Can Esperanto make something happen as the four players put this down? Lurking around the back to try and catch off the rotator. At least buy them some time, but already Oscarish gets a kill back in towards the site. Innocent's found another as well. Hunter may even go down. He only has a pistol, but there's Esperanto at least spring back one. The problem is this retake has been nigh on flawless and it's left on to Letney. The man who managed to get that AUG picked up. Defuse going to be faked out. Just trying to catch him, but he expects Innocence push. A smart play from him. Just trying to wrap back around bait out the time, and he wins the clutch. Smart play from Letney. And that's going to be a bounce back of huge proportions for the T side. As well, their money was screwed up until that point. That's huge. Letney brought his dancing shoes tonight. Back and around the crane he goes. So that Crazy can close on what started as that opening pick. I wonder if the CTs now feel silly. They had their gun round one. They had one follow-up purchase with it. And their setup, their play, their standard is to throw a guy in front of a bomb site hiding behind a traffic cone. Take some gull. And now it'll result in some losses. Pistols back up. Three Deegs USP P250. No flashbags. Not a single smoke left over. Fortunately for XCOM, no contact until now. Crazy's gonna take some initial damage as next is softened up. That Deagle, deadly at a distance. But now they're starting to find their openings at the A site. This could draw CTs over or even force them to activate on the site. And if Reitz activates by walking inward, he's doomed, Tom. There's three keys waiting for him. Yeah, that was the the bait at least has gone down. They've managed to get rid of Hunter. The thing is, there's still two players here. Smokes for the cross and... Ooh! Mono with a nice little one-tap at least. He's done a fair bit of damage. There's still a possibility to at least remove weaponry. Bomb's still down on the ground. Gonna have to go back for that. And in fact, they're gonna go all the way back. Rotation from Otto. He's down to just 11 HP. Esperanto also tagged to half and... He's been spotted out. He's just, again, he's trying to hold off these rotations. They put him on a lurk roll on this map. Not necessarily what we always see, but it seems to be working here. And he spotted the final man. We'll even clear it out with three HP. Four to one. Crazy come close, but still going to be their fourth round. And kicking things off on the T side. I, I don't know about you, but from what I've seen so far, although minimal, the changes to the map haven't really changed that much in terms of the side. It seems like teams are still able to negate the little gap they put in towards A fairly easily. Yeah, it creates some, some new oddities, say, on that bomb site. I mean, we saw it come into effect with the after plant and let the ability for, for T's in a post plant to not just sit back on the ramp, but also actively get into the bomb site, potentially push into elevator if they time it with a flash or if the CT, say, goes all the way to sandbags. So it, it definitely changes, I'd say, the post plants, but in terms of the execution and, and just initial map control, no, ramp seems to play about the same. So I agree with yeah. you there, Tom. Yeah, it sort of left it still, at least for now, in a T-sided way. And I, I think especially like some of the better teams on this map have, have got so much utility usage over onto that A site. Like I know the boost spot, at least at the far back of the site, there's smokes, there's nades for that. The close boost as well. There's Molotovs. I'm pretty sure you can throw even oh, close to the spawn to hit those in. Box. So, 
yeah, for the CT side, this map is really tough at the moment. I know that Chad has talked about it a lot in terms of what he would change about timings and even working with the map creators to sort of go, hey, Valve, look, we've even done it for you. This is what you can do. So I still think changes need to be made, but it does make for an interesting dynamic. Like, do you just play for retakes on the A side? Do you stack it up and take heavy risks? And that's actually what we've seen from the CT side here. Yeah. They have just stacked things up on this side of the map. Gone ahead and sat in it and allowed for the wall of smokes to cascade over. Blocks entire vision. Molly on the site and spam through smoke from hunters. Good for an opening kill. It's going to allow for the bomb to push inwards. Still three CTs here, but unable to really do much. Again, a follow up Molly, a flashbang. That's just enough to at least get down the bomb and. They're even able to walk away after. Nexus spotted on the site and pinched. Innocent should be able to finish, and he does. Hunter's gone ahead and hidden himself behind the pillars around the side of the building, so that's a bit of a cheeky play in a post plant. You see how wary Mono is of Esperanto and a potential lurk, but now all these after plants activate. Finally a trade. Stomp able to move it forward a bit, but Mono arrives not in the nick of time. Off to the high ground, another one connects, and he should know Letney's back behind sandbags, but he's not going to get baited out by this tap, and there's just no time. Op saved after the 3k, what a chaotic after plant, but it's crazy, it's fifth round of the board. See, I, this is something completely off topic, but I wonder if it's possible, if you jump off the map as the bomb's going off, if you can avoid dying to the bomb and survive. Right just kind of sail into the next round yeah like i feel like the timing would literally have to be perfect because there is still a few seconds after the bomb goes off but i, I want to see someone do it i always kind of wanted to see letney do it there but he, he didn't need to he was far enough away from the bomb anyway but really good execution i, I think that's going to become the standard what we just saw from crazy like with that high smoke up above to block the boost all the molotovs and smokes just to isolate every single angle like if you notice in that position there was not a spot that was not either flash, molotov, or smoked by the side of Crazy. And it made things... Well, you saw what the CTs did. Nothing. Because there was nothing they could do until they had to retake. I hope the... I hope our observer caught Stomp in his initial op boost. It was a, a nice little two-man boost from the back of A site. Nothing because we've got Crazy executing B. But uh, they, they forgot something, Tom. Uh, the all-important bomb. Doubling back is Letney. And within this moment this window of opportunity has been made for XCOM that is no opera no no chance no kill from the sniper rifle that was so hungry to get into the site and now with the smoke down and this time having passed he's hesitant met by a molly still an open cross hunter almost giving him a chance but it's Esperanto on the lurk of which they were so worried about last round. Well, sure enough, there he is again. I like this. You mentioned it earlier. They've put him into a lurk role here for Vertigo, and it's a fresh look for him, which I gotta say I enjoy. Yeah, I, I, I think, I, I don't know how much of this is Emmy, the coach, or how much of this is now Nexa going back into in game leading, because I believe it was Hunter for a little while, but uh, just from tweets, we've seen the Nexa has been doing it again. And it has seemed that Esperanto has gone from being Fairly underwhelming, considering the caliber of player he is, to back to old Esperanto. Like, back to the guy who was headshotting everybody, uh, annoying people in, in FPL, and just, like, being absolutely destructive. And, and that's what this team wants. He's the loose cannon. He's the guy that you basically don't want to play against because you don't know where he's going to be. And in these situations at the moment, from what we've seen, they put him in a role where he can do every single one of those things, but to the better ability than most. Stop for the op shot and wow, what a zinger. He's so good. Hunter just pokes his head over the A site. Looking for a little info. And he takes a relatively large round between the eyes. So the T's adapt by just moving back into forklift with bomb. Trying to make some noise, I would say, to, to maybe fake a rotation towards B. They've cut all audio over on the A site. Nexa lines up a small. Let Nee and Co. to do the exact same. This is a, the exact execute we saw in a previous round where the CTs were stuck behind it. This time, Oscarish is within the bomb site. There were follow up Molotovs, and sure enough, here they are. He's burned into a gun duel. And burned out of that. Reets back behind Box Tom. Now he waits for them to try and push the half wall and off the flash, they'll do so. 
What's the sound being made? It, it's evident that they're trying to get in some more aggressive positions. Every other time, they've had somebody lurking in the back. Luckily, Otto just seems to be popping heads at the moment and stomp so low. He has to just hope that somebody peeks into his crosshair. Attempting a wall bang, but Mono's able to close out one. It's left on to Letney again. We saw him win a clutch just a couple of rounds ago from this exact same position. And this time looking to play it a little bit differently. Here's the bomb being tapped. He comes out from Mono. Now it's all left on to stomp, and you can just see Letney again just rotating around, looking to try and play this on the edge of the smoke. But it looks like he's got it again. The kill will come in, but he's just played it perfectly. And it, it seems like from that position, he knows exactly yep. what he's doing. And the worst of all, Stomp King even dies to the bomb. Yep. Gets blown up to finish it all off. And I think that round, again, it, it's another highlight of Letney playing the changes to the A site. So he uses that gap. He even sees Stomp jump off of the boost, that opera who was trying to get vision on the A site. Think about how being a boosted player on a retake A gave you such an advantage on all of the T's who had to peak ramp when somebody tapped bomb. What's Letney able to do in this previous round? Well, he hears the bomb tap and he waits because sure enough, the CTs are going to try to come clear him. They have more chances to do so as well. They don't have to run around what is an awful angle of that long corner. No. And he's in that then. Peeks his head in the perfect spot and gets it. This round's gonna be a freebie. They've lost that single A player from crazy and everybody else walks into B for free. The MP9 maybe upgrades into a second weapon, but the bomb plant inevitable. And the eighth round for crazy should be too. Yeah, Mono on his rotation will be caught and this time it more just comes down to not gambling in the right direction, but they do at least manage to get themselves the AK-47 of Hunter. He's sort of been the unlucky duckling for headshots so far in this game. Like, he got wrecked by the AWP while he was on ramp. He just got wrecked by a Deeg in the same regard. And then again, he, he is sort of playing the fake most of the time over towards A. So it, it's one of those roles where you're hoping you kind of get two kills, but you kind of expect to die. So maybe that's the change they've made. Like, I can't say I've watched a whole lot of their games recently. They've, they've played a lot online, but maybe Hunter's taken a bit more of a backseat, which if, if that is the case, that's very surprising. And maybe it's just more for Vertigo, but whatever's going on behind the scenes, and at least in this match, it is working fantastically well. 8-1 on the T side. Sure, we've said this is a T side in Maple from what we've seen so far, but this is getting, I, I can't say it, Connor. You, you can say if you this is getting a little bit Valiant. There you go. <laughs> hey, but at least now when we have certain players from Crazy in a clutch, we can go back to saying like, what a Valiant F Because you weren't <laughs> able to say that when they were Valiants, you know? It's, yeah. it's just like a caster's no-go. Well, now we've lost things like Crazy Clutch, woo! Yeah. They robbed that from us. The I'm worst is being. Offended, but I'm, I'm still impressed and I'm still excited to see whether or not they can deal with a double op. Wall spam? trying to deconstruct the setup of crazy on this a corner they've got a boost going on with auto get his perspective when he even gets the kill is that a t tours or did misty get it i don't know i i saw it as well so you know it was beautiful it was a beautiful and... kill and it's a good way to soften the sight with a ding to follow up poor reitz has to fall back into cover tom good luck to Holding off with a full execute with no flank and half HP. Yeah, this this A site, they have struggled so hard to defend it. Mono gonna try and sneak through and actually a gap around the edge of the smoke. They threw down a second one, but he runs straight through it and it kind of ended up helping him out. At least managing to get one back. However, that one seems to be short lived as now Reeks the only one left standing. Trying to sneak his way through the smokes, but they're all fading at once. Maybe he could catch Esperanto, who's actually watching for the flank. That's what he's going for now. Just kill Esperanto. It's like, look, you're not getting me from behind, but that's about it. Not getting anything else from that. And, well, it, it seemed almost like quite a spiteful kill. It's like, oh, you, you're waiting for me, are you? Well, yeah. I'll kill you and lose the round. You can't win the round, at least kill SB. Yeah. <laughs> that's what I was do. That is exactly what I would do if I was playing against him. But then again, uh, that's a little bit more personal from my end. I'd I just love to destroy him. I, uh, I Zeus the Cillian <laughs> on, on Vertigo once and knifed him in the same game too.
That's my And you, you never speak about it, so it must be. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, stomp with the drive-by D. Aha, the gap in the half wall changes things for both the offense and defense. And with three CT still stacked up at the ace, I understand why Crazy would like to go elsewhere. They don't know it, but they're making the right call in this one. Although they will be pushed into the AUG and the Fama, so pick your poison. The three Deegs or a couple of rifles. They're not going actively. They're not flashing or smoking their way forward. They just have to hold off on the cross and hope Crazy walk inwards. But with the utility still on the T's, you'd think they'd go for it. But if you shoot at Esperanto, you got to take him down. If not, he's going to push right past you and oh clear God. out the bomb site on his own. Innocent caught on the window jump stomp. He gets the chance to bring it back, and it's just next at a clutch now. Yeah, it's a, a mixed buy of weapons, but it seems to be working out for XCOM. Stomp just going to be waiting. Nexa would do the same, maybe trying to bait them into thinking he's rotated. But for now, at least, they're not taking the bait. The thing is, no matter really what Nexa does here, he's going to be in a tough situation. He doesn't actually know if there's anybody in on the flank. And the patience from XCOM is probably the best choice they could have made. Don't give this man a 1v1 duel. Force him to go for the plant. Now Stomp King knows that he's there. He's actually going more solo and a miss Molotov. That could be the round in itself. Instead, Nexa waits for the peak, and that's a good double peak coming out from XCOM. Taking the time, being patient, and, well, a slight mistake from Nexa. They will get themselves around, but even still, that's, that's more of a boost as well. I just realized that that buy round was kind of weird from the CT side because they had like oh, yeah. a fair bit invested for some of the players. We got real freaky last round, Tom, and it worked. XCOM finally able to close out one. I mean, that's what, at least the third 1vx clutch we've seen them in. Normally going down on the A site, normally involving Letney. But alas, XCOM have picked one up and they, of course, move that op forward here into the 12th. Buy back from Crazy. Finally a test of their funds. They're still having fun. They sit back and relax on the B site, losing the opening duel to Stomp, however. I like this aggressive off. He can have support through the half wall too, if need be. But he waits. There's nobody else there for him. XCOM justify a rotation over to the B site. Innocent could at any moment jump through the window. We saw him go for it in the previous round. We also saw Reitz peeled off of this position by Esperanto, even though he had the jump on. So let's see if it works out yet again. There's smokes this time. Full execution. The counter-terrorists play it back with nades of their own. Tease. Looking for some space. Now they're actually burning Mono all the way down. Maybe didn't have anywhere to go. There's a boost in play as well for the CT side. Trying to look over all of these smokes that have gone down, but now the ground's been gained! The Nexa with two bullets hits two headshots. There's some things you just can't counter, and that is one of them. Wow, the CT side have been absolutely ruined. The man who got the first kill, the opening kill with that AWP, is left cowering on the A site. The might of this crazy roster. And while... They now know where he is as well. Don't think he's going to be getting out of this one alive. And Otto, he, he never seems to need the scope of that gun. Right? It, just a pure one tap of it every single time. 10 to 2. Sick round coming out from Crazy. And I, it, to be honest, if you're XCOM at this point, I don't even know what you change. I don't know what you do. It's funny, that double headshot from Nexo last round. He, he, that was That's the equivalent of somebody sticking their fist out and two dudes just running into it, yeah. despite it being fully extended. Like they double peak and they just get domed. Laser beam shots by Nexa, who picks up that bomb to join forces with this A setup. Pistols out of XCOM, they're back into the economic dumps. They're back into despair. And yet they've managed to get there in time. They line up on this A, even allowing Oscarish to drop a body before the T's get moving inwards. There's some curiosity from Esperanto back in T-Spawn. He's very patient, waiting ambitiously for a CT to push, but Stomp at the top of mid is the most aggressive anywhere else than the A-site. It's a pure stack, and they wait back as Hunter 
picks off the first one, crouches into Mono's angle, and he's hoping he gets pushed so that Reach should be able to shoot him in the back, which he does. The headshot connects, but at Mono's cost, stops, boots, hit the dirt. He's back behind the flank, the 2v2 turn 2v1, but his position unbeknownst to Crazy, and they plant. He walks around the corner with the Deagle up, and Esperanto is going to get blindsided. He had a chance to shoot, and he doesn't pull the trigger. The AK is there for his taking. This puts both the T's in the same position, and he cuts down the first one, Tom. It's just auto left, and the timing. He walks out not to spot Stomp, but rather to let this one unfold. Doubling back to the other side, Stomp clearing the corners. Now on site, he's above the bomb. No kit. The tap, the damage, the kill, the clutch. XCOM taking a third. Yeah, it's this guy again. I, I feel like this is the the man that really has been leading this team through. And I, I have to say, when I saw the roster initially, I was looking at someone like Innocent. So I was like, I haven't seen Innocent play in a while. Uh, he had like a decent run when he played with Penta. Seemed like a, a good Polish player, but never really getting into a strong Polish team. Then he joins this XCOM roster, which I'll be honest, from previous XCOM rosters, I was quite surprised because they haven't, they haven't been particularly good. I can't say I've ever been impressed. This one looks decent. Like, there's something behind it. I don't know if it'll ever be a world beater, but they definitely have some talent. And I think Stomp King's one of the guys leading it. Maybe a little bit too aggressive in this round, though. His teammates get two opening kills, and he goes pushing onto the ramp. This time, Hunter manages to close him out, and now they don't know how much ground's been taken. Luckily, they already get quite far back into the site, and it's only Hunter expending his utility here. Reach with a peek, but Hunter executes him. A man who's been relatively quiet so far, but given the chance, and we know that he can turn rounds, luckily for them, Innocent is there to put him down. Back in with another man advantage. Got Vision up from Oscarish, and Innocent watches the half wall. What's the play here from Crazy? We've still got that full belt of utility for next. This would open up Esperanto to just glance inwards, looking for the duel. Esperanto is going to be burdened by bomb, though. Mind you, by supporting nades, it could be okay. Still, Innocent floats next to it, and he gets the timing. He peeks. Esperanto's head turned. XCOM, they could rotate bodies over, and they will. Smoke confirms the last one's here. And with bomb on the dirt, the timing's okay for the rotation. Next up, he falls back. And there he goes, pinched by the final three. Good job by XCOM to just rotate in as fast as possible. I was going to call them XCOM, but I think you're a fan of the yeah. other team. <laughs> no, there's no Never. bias here. I'm, I'm completely even. Do you know what, the one thing I do like about their their name specifically is it would there's one song that fits perfectly. And I'm hoping you'll be able to get it without me having to say anything. You know, I think we have very different tastes in music, Tom. Ah, X Kong, give it to you. Oh, all right. Yeah, yeah. It fits perfectly. Like, X Kong, give it to you. That would be <laughs> perfect. That should be their, that should be their catchphrase. <laughs> I'm doing their marketing for them, listen, Connor. All they need listen, is copyright listen. songs. If, if Easy for Ents could become one of the most trending hashtags on, on a national level for Finland, then I think, uh, I think that X Kong, give it to you has a chance, all right? It's not an <laughs> awful idea. But innocent. They just need to get to a major final. That that will help. There you go. Yeah. If that's a good point, to be fair. The uh, the aggression yet again, Tom. You just talked about Stomp going uh, going hyper last round with that AWP. Well, it's innocent, the first casualty here in the 15th. The final of the CT side from XCOM. And they lose the man advantage early yet again. 510 would be a promising half if a pistol could swing it all back. But right now it's mid control. Esperanto takes the forefront. Letney's here to support him. Stomp floating around the elevator room. If any moment comes peeking back towards door. Nice quick scope. He sees Esperanto and puts him down. Now the split into the B is an XCOM have only a single defender on it. Mono with a Molotov on the site. Trying to find the right peak. Beauty of a headshot, but falls to the follow-up kills and Nexa through the flames. Charred to 20 HP. Gets into the face of Stomp close. There's another though, Reitz. He may be jumping through the window. So the question will be, does Nexa fall back from green to help his teammate on site? No, Letney, he pushes forward. They doubled down on this forward after plant aggression. 
and Reitz hasn't yet hit the floor. Stomp, he's gonna push into the close proximity, but a no scope to the leg and a second attempt. Let me to the clutch, he Woo! gets it. Turns with the Galil. And an 11th round for Crazy. Like, I know that the scoreboard shows our Esperanto at the top, but Letney has been sick in this game. Like, let, let's be real. When we look at this roster, you, you almost look at everybody else within it as the sort of stars, and then him normally as the more supportive role. He has clutched, I think, three rounds in 1v2s or whatever situations that he probably shouldn't be winning. Like, that 1v2, he's facing one way, and then he has to spin around and headshot the guy behind him. Then we had the two rounds where he manages just to maneuver around the boxes over on towards the yeah. ace. Three one the ace launchers at least. He's been sick this game. Here we go. Into the second half. All right. Can he transition said success? Auto pop flash onto the stairs. Next to active. Ooh, the assists. And they're still stuck in this meat grinder of a B site. Esperanto, oh another double. And they're going to charge down the last. Poor XCOM walking into the slaughterhouse. Tom, what a great flashbang coming from the yeah. very depths of mid. I, I think this is clear evidence of how much work has been put into this map by Crazy. Like, there's not many teams that I've seen with so many executions on the T side. I Actually, one of them was a Danish team called the Lingby Vikings, who, uh, according to Risk, are some like the 12th best team in Denmark. They had some really good executions. Like, they had a, a lot of what we've seen from Crazy. So it definitely seems like we are past the days of uh, teams having excuses of there being no executions, there being no setups. Like, there, there are plenty now that have been sussed out by teams. So I'm, I'm actually starting to really enjoy watching teams play this map because there's a lot of it there's a lot of things you can do with grenades you know what's wild there's, there's lots of things you can do with grenades and and i think that applies to vertigo but if you check the scoreboard and look at enemies flat only five people have been flashed in this entire match and we're you sure rounds. that's not esca no this is the in game i'm i'm talking to tv but like auto, auto has four in one and round. had two last round yeah that's what I'm saying. Before last round, there was only three people flashed. That seems insane. Does that seem odd? But they also all have zero utility damage. That can't be correct. Well, that's why you don't rely on technology. Yeah, I, 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 I don't want to ruin your stat, but I think that has to be wrong. Now <laughs> that I see the utility damage, yeah. Mr. Bismire, I, uh, I regret bringing I think it's per half. I think it's per half. Let's which, move along. I'm, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, there's no way I've seen players yeah, burn today. That's such a that's such a like a that's such a caster experience. You never know if you can believe the graphics. That you yeah. Know. You never are entirely sure. And uh well stay in school, kids. <laughs> well, I think the only stat we need to look up at the moment for crazy is the fact that they are 13 and 4 up. They're in a very strong position. The AKs will come in, but utility is minimal. And we saw how effective Molotovs were for Crazy when it came to challenging this A site. There is not a single one in sight. The fact is, Oscarish, to get extra nades, had to remove his head armor. His helmet's not available in this round, and versus multiple Famai and an MP9. You've seen this Hunter It's going to be right? tough. Yeah, this is kind of filthy. Oh, and it works. They've, they've applied a boost to both sides of that wall now, both on their T-side setup outside of Yellow Tarp, and now here on the on the, the track, too. Both of which get them a 5v4. So, yeah, the preparation from Crazy doesn't just come in forms of grenade and team play, nay, it boosts, too. Connoisseurs of Vertigo, so it seems. Hunter cuts down this entire play at the B site. Last man up is going to be innocent. He walks into the first peak and gets himself a kill. But Esperanto crouching and crab walking round establishes this 10 point lead. This is massive from crazy. This is the kind of, I'll call it a warm up game that we were hoping for going into yeah. the delicacy, the treat, the absolute barn burner that may be Vitality versus Crazy coming up right after this. So if there's anything to tell us is it's that as they go 14 and 0 in the season, they're 14 and 4 at the moment, and they could very well be gunning for the 15-0 over top of a top five ranked team in the world on Nuke. 
dude, if you're watching ESEA right now, I'm gonna see you in an hour because there's no reason you go anywhere else. Well, P250 headshot. We'll give a little bit of an opening here, even still. Such a weak purchase. It's gonna be a tough effort. The flashman goes through, and it's actually gonna be a TK. So blind that he accidentally shoots his teammate in the face. Esperanto gets aggressive and is punished for it this time. Got 25 kills to his name, so you can understand it at this point. Bomb, however, dropped into the open, and I don't think there's any real worry. Otto caught jumping, but that's about it. 15 and 4. Another round on the board for Crazy and XCOM with their last ditch effort. As they now have to win 11 in a row just to get to OT. Ops though. Ops in the equation here. Let's see if Stomp can apply it to the T side. Where is he headed early? Watching elevator drop, so he's gonna eventually get himself into a position to soften the A site. Bomb being back by spawn means there's no catalyst call as of yet. Esperanto in the middle. This is where he was actively lurking on the T side, and it's no surprise to see him doing it on CT as well. Why? Because I think it's a very proactive position for CTs to even get aggressive. Go start walking around in the T-spawn. You know, you can make rounds very weird from these sorts of positions. And you normally get 1v1 duels, which is exactly what you want for Esperanto. Although he drops oh. into the AK of Mono. Fare thee well, young SP. Letney, he's in the elevator room, waiting with auto and the op. It's all floating around. The real key to this, Tom, is the bomb. It's been picked back up, and it seems like it's working towards A. Yeah, Mono just tried to make a hell of a lot of noise running back towards the B site. And, uh, yeah, it worked. It did bait one rotation. Next, uh, I think he would have done it anyway, even without the footsteps, but it definitely helped if you hear all those movements. And that is one thing about this map. You can hear the footsteps from quite a lot of places. Letney, he hits the timing. Mono's going to go down, and that is it. It is quickly ended... Uh, Brutal, but wow, well, I would just say accurate affair coming out from the guys at crazy. Like, th there was nothing about that clinical, that was the word I was looking for. There we go, I got there in the end, Connor. Yeah, maybe you should check out a clinic yourself, Tom. First one's done, vertigo in the books, and now we move to nuke. We're still gonna have crazy, but a much harder opponent one would expect. Top five ranked team yeah. in the world, possibly a top five player in the world with Zywu. I don't even think Possibly. that's a controversial statement. <laughs> like, isn't that bewildering? The young gun hits mm -hmm. the server next, folks. So me and Tom will see you guys there for map two of ESCA. We've got a four-map broadcast today. More vitality after. Back to Vertigo. It's action-packed. So we'll see you all.